I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. My Lords, progress on human rights reform has been made, but there remains more to do. The United Kingdom is committed to supporting Bahrain-led reform, including through carefully targeted assistance and private and public engagement. We are clear that disengaging or criticising from the sidelines is less likely to deliver the positive reform Bahrain and the international community seek. I have been given the official dossier from the Bahrainian Special Investigations Unit, which reveals that their investigation into the torture allegations of death row inmates Mohammed Ramadan and Hussein Mossa are inconsistent, contradictory and contravene international standards. The dossier shows that the SIU, which the noble lord maintains is transparent, is quite the opposite and implicated now in human rights abuses. In light of this, will the Minister agree to a meeting with myself and representatives from the Bahrain Institute for Rights and Democracy to discuss this dossier, uh, the IAF funding, and to discuss why these two men transpire to have been deemed guilty by the Bahrainian authorities even before they went to the dock? My Lord, sir, I'm always happy to meet, and we can certainly look into a meeting on the more general, sir, on the more specific point that the noble lord made. I, I beg to differ. It was because of our investment in the technical support that the United Kingdom has provided, particularly for the oversight authorities, that we saw in this particular case of both uh, Hussein Musa and Mohammed Ramzan, their actual case being looked again, was part and parcel. And the noble lord shakes his head. That is fact that it was looked again. Of course, we regret the fact because the death penalty prevails as a form of sentencing in Bahrain. And I assure the noble lord in that respect, again, myself with the ambassador and indeed my right honourable friend, Dr. Morrison, as the minister responsible, have made our views known that we do not believe the death sentence should prevail and we will continue to make that case to the Bahraini authorities. My Lords, the noble lord makes the point about positive engagement and seeking change. Uh, and I do know that the UK are funding the alternative non-custodial sentencing programme. And we now have a report from eight UN experts on this programme saying that it discriminates against human rights defenders. What is the noble lord going to say about that when he is the minister responsible for human rights and his own programmes are discriminating against it? Well, again, as the noble lord, I'm sure, in his background towards the question will know that that particular programme, uh, when we, we work directly with UNDP, and we've been working on this particular issue, he raises the issue of alternative sentencing. We have actually seen positive outcomes. There's now, I believe, uh, up to 1,000 people who have been looked upon for alternative sentencing to prison sentences. Now, the noble lord raises genuine concerns and, and rightly raises concerns about human rights. Those continue. As I said in my original answer, we're far from where we want to be. But it is our continual engagement with the Bahraini authorities which is producing results. Would the noble, minister, the noble lord, the minister, not agree that the British judicial system is uh, one of the very best in the globe, if not the best? and that many countries have benefited through training from our judicial system. Would he perhaps be able to offer additional training to some of the countries that we know well who have rather um, un uncertain outcomes of their judgments? Because I know how much in the countries I serve in that those judges welcome visits and support and training from our judicial system here. My noble friend makes a helpful suggestion uh, um, but I would also share with my noble friend that we are seeking to do more. In this respect, there have been judges from Bahrain who have visited uh, the United Kingdom. Indeed, they visited uh, both Crown Courts and Magistrates Courts, and we continue to engage with the judiciary on this very point. My Lords, uh, the UN in the last hour has called upon Bahrain to prevent the execution of these two men, and I quote from what they've just said. Admission of evidence obtained under torture into any proceeding violates the rights to due process and a fair trial and is prohibited without exception. If carried out in these circumstances, the death penalty would constitute an arbitrary killing. I end the quote. Does he agree? Well done. Well. My Lords, I am aware of those reports. I haven't seen the full detail of them. What I can share with the noble lady is that on a previous occasion when the death penalty last year was also commuted, I made a direct intervention at that time. 
Unfortunately, that death penalty was not reversed. What we did do subsequently at the Human Rights Council, we made a specific reference under item 2 on the issue of the death penalty, and we'll continue to do so. On the specific report that the noble lady has mentioned, I will review that on my return, but it remains a consistent position of the United Kingdom Government. The death penalty should not be part of the sentencing policy. We continue to make that case with Bahrain and elsewhere.